Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reading George Brown, Class Clown, Trouble Magnet, Chapter 7. Let's get started. Chapter 7. Okay, this guy can go over here, Alex said. He put an action figure near the base of the volcano he and George had built. It was Saturday morning and they were putting the finished touches on their Hawaiian project. You're putting R2-D2 in the Hawaiian village, George asked Alex. He's a robot. But he's broken, so I don't care if he gets messed up, Alex said. I guess it will work, George said. Once the volcano erupts, you won't have to be able to see him or any of that village. That's kind of a bummer, Alex said. We worked so hard on it last week. George nodded. They had done lots of research on Moana Loa, the largest volcano in the world. Building the volcano and village hadn't been easy because Louis had called out a million band rehearsals. It had been a long week, but at least George had a burp free erupting is what volcanoes do. George told Alex, they explode and destroy Kapow. Kapow, Alex repeated. You're sure about how much baking soda and cherry jello powder you pour into this vinegar? Exactly half of this bag, George said, holding up a plastic bag filled with jello powder and baking soda. Any less and it won't explode. Any more and we'll make a major mess. This is going to be so cool, Alex said. I can't wait until Monday morning. George nodded. When this volcano erupts, everyone is going to totally freak. Some lies are made from flowers, others are made from seashells or feathers, Sage says as, he, as she gave her report to the class on Monday morning. She had a lie around her neck. When someone gives you a lie, it is supposed to show that they like you. George put his hand over his mouth and tried to hide a yawn. Sage's report was boring. Louis's report on ukuleles hadn't been much better. In fact, so far the only report that had been even kind of cool was Juliana's about Poi. Poi was this soupy pudding match that was made of the root beer some plant. Juliana had made enough for everyone to try. And the way you ate it was by scooping it up with your fingers. It didn't taste bad for something that looked pretty nasty. George thought the Poi looked like, a, like the George soup. He used to make during lunchtime at his old school, especially the kind where he mixed up fruit punch, vanilla pudding, and salad dressing. When he was really goofing off, he used to stick some. He used to stick some of his action figures in George's soup and pretend that they were stuck in quicksand. Good times today was though some action figures were really good to get in. Just as soon as the volcano exploded, finally it was George and Alex's turn. They carried their volcano to the front of the room. George placed it on the table and stood back. Then he reached into his pocket and pulled out the container of secret eruptant powder. At the end of Alex's report on the Mauna Loa volcano, George was going to pour half the powder into the bottle of vinegar that was hiding inside the volcano and made it erupt. The Hawaiian Islands were all created by volcanoes, he said. They started from hot spots deep in the earth, a stream of super hot rock called lava was forced up from the hot spout. This caused volcanoes to form. George stood there quietly, listening to Alex speak. Suddenly, he felt something weird in the bottom of his belly. It was a fizzy feeling, like a million soda bubbles were bouncing around in there. Oh no, not the super burp! He'd been burp less for a week. How could this be happening now? This volcano was called Moana Luan. I don't know which means Long Mountain in Hawaiian. Alex reads from his papers, It's the largest volcano on our planet. George couldn't pay attention to what Alex was saying. He couldn't pay attention to anything but the burp swelling inside him. The sewer burp. It was black, it was back, and it wanted to come out. Already the bubbles were ping-ponging in George's belly and ping-ponging the wet just chest. Moana Lua has erupted 39 times since 1832, Alex continued. Its most recent eruption was in 1984, and scientists say it's sure to erupt again. George had to stop that burp. He just had to shut his lips tight and held his nose. Then he swallowed really hard, trying to force the burp back down his throat. But the super burp was strong. It had been kept down for too long. It needed to break free. Burp. Burp. The biggest burp in the world erupted. A super 
call so Moana size burp. A burp so loud it could probably be heard all the way across the Pacific Ocean in Hawaii. Alex stopped talking and start, stared at George. The kids all started laughing when Mrs. Kelly stood up. Quiet, class, she said. I'm sure George didn't mean to do that. That was sure the truth. George opened mouth to say, excuse me, but nothing came out. Instead, his hands started moving. It was like they had a mind of their own. They popped off the top of the container and they had to be holding. There was no way to stop them from pouring all the secret eruption powder into the vinegar. George, Alex shouted, what are you doing? You're only supposed to put it in half of the powder. Alex never finished his sentence. The volcano began to shake. It began to tower and then... Kapow! The volcano erupted. Ruby red lava. Gel shot all the way up in the air. Now George's feet wanted to have some fun. He began to leap and down like they were on fiery cold. Hot, hot! George's mouth shouted. Ouch! Hot lava! George began to roll on the floor under the shower of vinegar, jello, and baking soda lava. Oh no, I'm being buried by lava, he shouted. George, what are you doing, Mrs. Kelly scouted. He pulled a tissue out of her sleeve and wiped lava splatters from her glasses. This is a science project, not the talent show. But George couldn't stop himself. He wasn't in charge of his own body. The super bird was. And the super bird wanted to tell, to roll George around on the floor. Hot lava, he shouted. Help! Whoosh! Suddenly, George felt something pop in his belly. It was kind of like a balloon being punctured with a needle. All the air rushed right out of him. The super bird was gone, but George was still there in front of the classroom on the floor. With red lava all over the place, he opened his mouth to say, I'm sorry, and those words were exactly the words that came out. What were you thinking, Mrs. Kelly asked. She didn't sound angry. She sounded disappointed. That was worse. George knew he'd Better not say that he wasn't thinking. That was a kind of answer that could get a kid in even more trouble. So instead, she said, I guess I was trying to show how sometimes volcanoes can erupt without warning. I didn't mean to mess with the classroom. That was the truth that he hadn't. Mrs. Kelly sighed. It's true that volcanoes can erupt suddenly, but I don't think what you did was the best way to demonstrate that. I'm really sorry, Mrs. Kelly, George said. He looked down at the gooey red mess in front of him. Miss Kelly looked puzzled and shocked her head. That's a start, she told him. Shouldn't you also tell Alex you're sorry? After all, he worked hard on this project. I'm really sorry, dude, George said to Alex. I didn't mean to ruin everything. George didn't answer. George could tell he was really mad. Nothing George could say or do was going to make his better right now. <laughs> Sadly, George looked up at Miss Kelly. I guess I'll go find Mr. Coleman and get a mop, he told his teacher. It's going to take a while to clean this mess, Miss Kelly shook her head again. I honestly don't know why you did these things, George. George knew why, but he didn't know why the super picked him up all the time. In the world of the victim, it wasn't fair, not at all. George skateboarded home from the band rehearsal later that day. He was really lonely. Even the people on the street seemed to move far from him. Of course, that was probably because they didn't want him to crash into them, or maybe because he smelled nasty, like old salad dressing from the vinegar and jello that had been in his hair. As George turned the corner and skateboarded into his block, he spotted Chris and Alex tossing a ball around Alex's front yard. George could tell they both saw him. He could also tell from Alex's face that he didn't want anything to do with George right now. Yo, George, Chris called out. Want to throw a ball around with us? George looked over at Alex. Okay, with you, he asked. Alex just shrugged. Whatever. I, I'm, I really am sorry about today, he said. It was about the tenth time he'd said it. You said you know how much stuff to put in, and why didn't you wait until I was done talking? Alex wanted to know. That was a plan. You were supposed to surprise everyone else, but not me. George wanted to say that he was just as surprised as Alex, but that would sound ridiculous. So instead, he just said it was just as something that came over me. Now Alex laughed. It came over you, all right. He was looking at the big red stains on George's t-shirt all over you. Oh, yeah, George agreed. My mom's going to freak. Chris held up the ball. You want to practice some killer ball moves? Maybe we can finally beat Louie's team. Sure, George said. Should the ball stop for a minute? I mean, if it's okay with you guys, it's cool, Alex said. I'll be after you. And then me. 
Chris agreed. We're definitely getting better at this game. Alex thought as he started to run away from the ball. Yeah, we are, George agreed. And now that he and Alex were talking again, he was feeling a lot better, too. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss Chapter 8. Like, comment, have a great day. Bye!